few days back, Rahul Gandhi actually released a video where he talked about how the media has ended up maligning him, how he was a darling of the media in 2004 when he entered politics for the first time. But over the years, they seem to have turned against him. If you have been tracking the Bharat Jodo Yatra, you would be noticing that the Congress party has been releasing several videos, some of them very high on the emotion quotient, and obviously most of them very nicely done up with lots of jinchak music and so on and so forth. But increasingly, political parties are now using the social media space and the YouTube to make their political point. And this week on One Take, I'm asking this question that why is it that the political parties are doing so? I'm going to go across to some of the statistics which was released by the INB ministry in 2014 Lok Sabha election. Now, according to those statistics, 19 of the ads on the YouTube was actually by the Congress party and around 14 was by the BJP. By the time it's come to the latest elections, the number has more than doubled for the BJP as well as for the Congress. In fact, the Congress is trying to capture the YouTube space and that of the social media. There was a think tank or there was a meeting which took place in the Congress party which was after the 2014 Lok Sabha elections and there was another one after 2019 Lok Sabha elections which came up and they were trying to find out the reasons why there was a failure of communication and they felt that they were not being able to reach out to the people. There were a large number of first-time voters, young voters who may not be hooked to the television sets but who were certainly hooked to their mobile phone. They also discovered that much of the source of news was now coming in from the newer social media platforms like of course the YouTube, that there was Instagram, there was Snapchat, Telegram and so on and so forth. And that's when Congress realized that we have to now stress on the social media platforms as well. Along with this was the common refrain and complaint that the national media or televisions doesn't show us enough. It is not loaded in favor of the opposition party. And therefore, we have to look for an alternative means of communication. Now, if you remember the last Lok Sabha elections as well, there were very snazzy videos of Rahul Gandhi released when he was meeting the fishermen uh, in Tamil Nadu. When you would actually go to that village, which is very much known for the YouTube link of theirs on cookery classes of one particular village group in Tamil Nadu. He spent an entire day with them and those videos were unleashed and a narrative was kind of built up. Of course, there were critics will ask this question and why didn't it help them in the Lok Sabha elections? That's something which I'm going to discuss in a little while and I'm also going to ask this question is that while political parties are searching for newer means of communication, does it always help if they're not backed up by a good organizational strength and strategy? Just to come back to these videos of Rahul Gandhi, which you all must have seen, it was very carefully thought of because he was concentrating on this down south. And that is because he was contesting from Wayanad as a member of parliament. He felt that it could gain attraction for him and it certainly worked for him individually as a member of parliament but not for his party which is the Congress. We know Congress's lack of performance in the last Lok Sabha elections. There was another crane of thought within the Congress that one of the main reasons why the BJP has also been able to come to power is because of the aggression on their communications as platform. And they have not been focusing only on you holding those usual press conferences or on television sets, national debates and so on and so forth. They also try to capture the imagination either through the animation or through the social media uh, platforms. And this worked very well for them when they contested elections in 2014 because that's when they built up the communication skills. The Twitter strategy of the BJP was much, much far ahead of the Congress party. It was only after the failure in 2014 that Rahul Gandhi was impressed upon that he must have a Twitter handle in his name. That is in the name of Rahul Gandhi, unlike the earlier when it was in the name of the office of Rahul Gandhi. Sonia Gandhi till date, mind you, has not entered the Twitter space. But just about every political leader in the Congress spectrum has. They have been asked to open a Twitter handle. And why just a Congress? Even somewhat reticent conservative parties uh, like the BSP are also now on Twitter. You find Mayavati who is very much on Twitter, of course Akhilesh Yadav, Mulayam Singh Yadav was on Twitter and most of the sudden parties 
So the art of communication is increasingly more and more on Twitter, on Koo, or on other social media platforms. And YouTube certainly is becoming the new platform for communicating or reaching out to their vote bank and to their audiences. I was talking about the statistics which was given out in 2014, post-2014. And if you look at the statistics today, the Congress, according to large statistics and calculation, has a large number of lakhs of viewers. Rahul Gandhi himself has over lakhs of traction on the YouTube handle of his. In fact, there are many instances where he holds you know, press conferences through YouTube, his videos are released to them. And in fact, in the Bharat Jodo Yatra, while he stayed away from giving interviews to channels, he's given his first two interviews to YouTube channels because it's, he feels, and the Congress party feels, that YouTube still has a space for allowing the opposition to air their views. Not that the BJP has been lagging behind because they have been a master of communication as far as YouTube and other social media platforms goes. When I spoke to one of the senior leaders of the BJP who is very much involved in the communication strategy of the party, he told me we don't concentrate only on television debates or holding press conferences. We actually want to capture the entire mind space to all arts of communication. There are going to be several first-time voters in the next Lok Sabha elections as well in 2024. And apart from that, we know that these are the people who are not hooked to TV sets. They are the ones who are on the move, they have the power of the mobile phone and they are constantly looking and hungry for more information on their mobile phones and through the various social media apps. In fact, it's not just about WhatsApp, which is often accused of running fake news at times, but it's about Koo, it's about Snapchat, Telegram, YouTube, Instagram and the works. And that's what the BJP leader told me, that we understood this strategy long before the Congress party has tried to do so. I think the present elections in Gujarat, which went by, in Himachal Pradesh, even the MCD elections, we would see that so many ads would be unleashed by the BJP versus the AAP and animations, you know, which would get a lot of traction. What the perception or the idea is, that when you see these ads or go into YouTube, it has a high recall value. It is on a space which is there to see. So you can keep going back on them and they cannot be easily deleted because they are very much in the cyberspace. Now to come back to the second and the most important question which I am asking and I do want your point of view on that as well by your response. Does that really work? Well, it's a mixed bag. Yes and no. To say that the BJP won the Lok Sabha elections in 2014 only because of the social media strategy would be a tad unfair. Yes, it was very much a part of the narrative to build up the entire perception or the character of Narendra Modi as the PM candidate. But at the same time, the groundwork, you know, the, uh, the art of communication going down to the basics, that is something which has always worked for the BJP. I remember during the West Bengal elections, the Trinamool Congress came out with those very funky videos which had the picture, an animation of Mamata Banerjee going across to jungles and she projected herself as a tigress who was taking on the bad wolves. And of course here, her finger was being pointed at the BJP. That clicked, that had a resonance, but that clearly was not just enough. It had to be backed up by groundwork. The Congress party is trying to understand that. It's getting there, not yet there completely. But through the Bharat Jodo Yatra, they're hoping to build up on this narrative. Both occupying the YouTube or the social media space on one hand, but at the same time trying to build up their groundwork. It's going to be a tough challenge for the Congress party, certainly, because they have been certainly been a weak link. They do not have a very strong organization, certainly not in many, many states like Madhya Pradesh, and Uttar Pradesh on and so forth. Just to have a snazzy social media strategy over here is not good communication enough. Nothing can replace that door-to-door -door campaign. Nothing can replace that one-on-one -on -one interaction between a neta and a, and a political party with the voter. That is something which the Congress party still has to do a lot of work upon. And that is something which other political parties like the DMK, the Trinamool Congress, the Aam Aadmi Party and of course the BJP has also understood. Do give in your reactions on the social media timeline. Does that really work? Is the social media strategy of political parties helping them get more votes? Do the voters get impressed by it or it makes no difference at all? Thank you so much for watching.